Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us to learn a little bit about the Faculty of Land and Food Systems at the University of British Columbia's beautiful Vancouver Point Grey campus. We are situated on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh First Nations. We are very fortunate and privileged to be able to learn, play, and work on this incredible, beautiful land in which we have been given the privilege to um, participate in. And we welcome all of you to join us today in looking up the native lands in your home country or your hometown to learn a little bit about the colonial history and the history of the lands of which you are currently joining us from today. This is a really important part of the university's journey to reconciliation and certainly something that you will see infused throughout all of your different learnings, particularly in the Faculty of Land and Food Systems, as we are committed to working with Indigenous communities and students and infusing the content of indigeneity into our curriculum, as well as ensuring that students have an opportunity to face, learn, and grow from uh, the learning of the colonial history of residential schools and the peoples on the land from which we are all privileged to be a part of today. We are joining you to share a little bit about what the faculty is all about. For those of you who are in high school, or maybe you're already in a post-secondary uh, institution and are looking for a change, You'll have an opportunity through our presentation today to learn a little bit about what the faculty is all about, the programs that we offer, some of the experiences our students have in the faculty, as well as an opportunity to learn what next steps you can take to apply and be admitted, as well as how to stay in touch with us and reach out if you have any questions. My name is Christine Clary and I'm the Director of Student Services in the faculty and that role comes with an opportunity to lead a team of staff professionals in career, student engagement and academic support to ensure that all of you, as you transition through your time as undergraduate students in the faculty, feel supported and have opportunities to grow and develop your personal, professional, and academic selves while you're undergraduate students here. I am joined today as well by four incredible students who are currently attending in the Faculty of Land and Food Systems, Maddie and Wing, who are both in the Food, Nutrition, and Health program, and Yolanda and Oceana, who are both studying in our Applied Biology program, and you'll have an opportunity to hear from them throughout the presentation. So what is the Faculty of Land and Food Systems? The Faculty of Land and Food Systems is a science faculty, but it is really rooted in science that has a social impact. All students in the faculty care about the world around us and have shared values that connect to understand why things are happening and the impact that changes in one part of this system in which we are all a part of impact other aspects of the system. It is a really integrated approach to your research and learning and if you are a student who likes to get your hands dirty, to practice what it is that you're learning, to take your learning outside of the classroom and have an opportunity to see the impact of your education in the real world, then the Faculty of Land and Food Systems as a science faculty could be a really safe and exciting place for you to be. We are looking at critical issues that impact you at a local level as well as at a global level. And I think the really important piece is understanding that systems approach to know that the opportunities for study and learning in applied biology will inform the way in which our students study in food nutrition and health, which informs their understanding of food and resource economics and how all of the different programs work together and their impact across all of the different disciplines and an integrative approach to solving solutions, which is reflective of how we solve solutions in the real world as well. We are ranked the number one agricultural school in all of Canada and we are ranked number 16 in the world. So really impressive statistics that we're really proud of and certainly should give you comfort as students coming into the faculty to know that you're getting a world-class education regardless of your discipline, an opportunity to learn from some really well-respected and world-renowned faculty members, as well as committed supports and resources that help inform the experience that you have as students and give you a really rich learning opportunity while also being a part of one of the top ranked universities in all of the world at the University of British Columbia. One of the things that we are really excited about with um, your journey into post-secondary education is that your interests are likely going to change a little bit. You as potentially a high school student or maybe in your early years of post-secondary are excited about different ideas for what it is you want to learn and what career it is you maybe want to pursue in the future. And one of the things that we really encourage our students to do is follow their passions and let those passions lead them towards something that they'll end up doing afterwards. The career landscape is always changing and the careers that exist today may be obsolete by the time we graduate in the same way that there will be new careers coming in the future that don't exist today. 
And so if you can ensure that you are following your passion and pursuing what it is that you're interested in, the opportunities will follow as you build your network, start to ask questions, get to know people in different industries, different communities, both on and off campus, and then have an opportunity to lead that into a career path around something that you're truly passionate about to be able to have the impact that you want to have in the world. Particularly for high school students, you have a bit of a narrow focus right now in terms of what your science understanding might be. And so one of the things that we are really excited to see as students expand their learning through their undergraduate program is the narrow interest that they might have at the beginning of their first year. This was a, a screenshot of a word cloud from some responses we gathered from our new incoming students on their very first day of school at our Imagine UBC Day orientation. And we asked them what it was they were interested in learning about in the Faculty of Land and Food Systems or for future uh, referenced as LFS. What was one word? And this is the word cloud that emerged. So a lot of interest in food and animals, which makes a lot of sense for our faculty, medicine, sustainability, health, the food system, nutrition. So lots of really broad categories and areas of interest very aligned with our faculty's values as well as disciplines. But halfway through the first term of their first year, this is how students responded to that same question. They are now starting to think more broadly about the ways in which their interests show up in their education. They're starting to meet and learn from different people, including their fellow peers who come from countries all over the world, have different experiences, different ideas, different perspectives on viewing the world, viewing the challenges that we're facing, faculty members who are doing research in areas that you might not even realize are an area of interest. And this is something that we really encourage our students to do is a lot of this exploration. So why study in the Faculty of Land and Food Systems? I referenced it a little bit earlier, just in terms of the opportunity to apply what you are learning outside of the classroom. It can be very easy to get kind of locked into the theory. And while all of our students have that strong foundational um, understanding of theories and concepts in science, you also have an opportunity as students to actually go out into the communities and have an opportunity to do practical labs, field trips, group work, uh, work with campus and community partners, and have an opportunity to understand from external stakeholders what their challenges are and working together with other students and community members to address and solve those challenges in a really integrated way. The community in the Faculty of Land and Food Systems is also a tight-knit community of learners uh, across our staff, students, and faculty, a lot of shared values around sustainability and care for the planet, the people and the animals that are living here, as well as the plants that um, grow around us. Uh, it is really important that you have some of those values in order to feel those strong connections. We're a smaller sized faculty, about 1,800 students at the undergraduate level study in this faculty. It's an opportunity for students to get to know one another, staff and faculty who have an opportunity to really get to know and name their students. And we all do have a reputation on campus as the friendly faculty, so certainly something we enjoy and certainly something we take a lot of pride in. And one of the ways in which we support students and create that community right from the very beginning is through the LFS Roots Program. Roots is an acronym that stands for Reach Out, Orientation, Transition, and Study Skills. And it is an integrative program that's unique to the Faculty of Land and Food Systems and developed by my team in LFS Student Services. It's a full year program that all new students are onboarded into when they accept their offers to UBC in May and supports their transition and learning throughout their entire first year in the faculty. We provide opportunities for them to get to know one another through integrated social experiences to get to know their peers. 90 student leaders, including some who are on the call with us today, um, who share their experiences back and give students an opportunity to learn from those who have come before them and help them through that very important and exciting time of transition that can also feel a bit overwhelming. UBC as an institution can be a pretty big and intimidating space. We try and create a small community within the LFS community for all new students, but there's still a lot to learn, a very steep learning curve. Things are different in university than they are in high school, or they might be different at UBC than they are at your current post-secondary education. So we do a lot of integrated, targeted outreach. It's a way to keep on top of what's happening in first year, and we integrate it through workshops and webinars, online modules, and we release content throughout the year to support your transition and learning. 
And if learning in small communities sounds great, but you want an even smaller community within which to, uh, to make your transition in first year, you might want to consider joining the Land One program. The Land One program is a first year cohort program that partners with our colleagues in the faculty at Forestry. So half the students in the program are in each of the two faculties. It provides additional opportunities to learn more about the foundational issues that drive the priorities of our faculty and the disciplines in which our students uh, learn around the issues of food security, climate change, land use and sustainability, looking at them from both a Western as well as an Indigenous perspective. This is a competitive program that does have a separate application process in addition to your application to UBC for admission. Applications are currently open and are due in spring of 2023. And you can find out more about this program by just Googling Land One UBC. And the first link that comes up will give you opportunity to learn a little bit more about the new program. The other way in which your learning is supported throughout your time in this, as an undergraduate student is through, again, another academic learning um, program that is unique to our faculty, the LFS4 series. So land, food, and community course from first year all the way to fourth year across all of the disciplines that we have in our faculty, where all of our students work together across disciplines to solve complex issues and have an opportunity to really see that systems approach in practice. Students will work with community partners on a range of food related product or projects, I'm sorry, and have an opportunity to learn as well as contribute to advancing new socially um, impactful ideas. And one of the ways in which we help connect that academic learning to what you are going to be preparing for after graduation is by integrating explicit career learning into all of the core courses. As part of my team in student services, we have a dedicated career strategist and Rob visits LFS 100, 250, 350, and helps students to make connections between the experiences they're having and how it helps to prepare them for careers through practicing how to talk about these things on a resume, in a cover letter, in an interview, connecting that learning to the skills that you are developing in order to be able to talk about these experiences when you're applying for jobs as an undergraduate student as well as afterwards. And this is something we are incredibly committed to as a faculty to integrate that career learning into your education so you don't have to work hard to add it on to your academic experiences. And to share a little bit more about her own experience in the core series is Yolanda from our Applied Biology program. Hello, I'm Yolanda and I am an international student from Zimbabwe. Uh, and one of my amazing experience uh, from LFS being an Applied Biology um, student is through the LFS uh, 350 class, which is part of the LFS core series uh, Christine just described. So in this course, um, this course gives students the opportunity to contribute to address uh, issues of food system sustainability and community food security in collaboration with uh, community partners. Um, and there are multiple community partners that uh, students get to choose to work with in groups. So I had the opportunity to work with uh, Kiwasa Neighborhood House, which is a grassroots multi-service community agency, uh, which provides a broad range of free and local social services and programs in East Vancouver. And it has been in operation for approximately 60 years. So it was a really great opportunity to work with um, uh, such a grassroots uh, community um, agency. So in, in my team, we had a team of uh, four students and the project that they presented that they wanted to collaborate with us was the food waste uh, audit team project. And uh, our goal was to help them meet their zero waste goals and be more sustainable. And um, since they, at that time, there was a lot of, they noticed there was a lot of uh, food waste that was um, being produced. Uh, so they wanted to have a strategy to help mitigate that. So uh, we, in, in our group there, we had uh, uh, different majors too. I remember I worked with someone who was also majoring in f &H, So it really, we had a really multidisciplinary approach um, having different backgrounds and different knowledges uh, that we brought together and uh, helped uh, develop. Uh, we made um, low barrier and a waste, low barrier and intuitive waste sorting system. We made signs, we made uh, visuals, and, and we also made a multilingual uh, poster to help be uh, informative of the importance of uh, food waste. 
Um, and we, we got to implement that from, from the beginning, um, having uh, so that help, help having meetings with a community partner, uh, setting the goals and planning the project and like uh, collecting data um, and and um, applying that data uh, that, that we found and like doing literature reviews and searching in literature of like different methods that work and really applying that. So it really shows the application of the knowledge that we, we get uh, from our studies and in, in, in being in fact effective in helping. Um, uh, a, a, a problem within something that needed to be solved within uh, within the community. So at the end, we we were able to make it an, an infographic about our outputs, our goals, uh, summarizing uh, what we did in the project, and we shared uh, with members uh, of the public, so uh, including faculty members um, within UBC at the UBC <laughs> Nest building. So we were able to share our project. Uh, and it was an, a wonderful experience because multiple students, as you can see in the, the picture in the, in the center that, that was on the day, uh, multiple students shared their project and we really got to see that application and really um, connect to the core values of uh, LFS as, as, as a faculty. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing, Yolanda, and the poster presentations that happen in each term for LFS 350 are a wonderful opportunity for students to practice as well their presentation skills and to share and communicate out the learning that they've done uh, with an external audience of students, staff, and faculty, some who intentionally go to visit the poster presentations like my team and I, as well as just students who are wandering through that space and are exploring and curious about what the students are up to. So it's a really incredible way of providing learning from the point of connecting with a community partner to presenting that information and translating learning to an external audience. And that's just one example of some of the experiential hands-on learning that our students have when they are in the Faculty of Language Food System. All of the learning that you are doing as a student is certainly fun, and if it connects to your passions and interests, it's that you, much more exciting for you to engage. But one of the ways in which you also build community is by getting involved outside of the classroom as well in experiences that will enhance your personal and professional learning and inform maybe some of your academic pathways or help enhance some of your academic learning in the classroom. University is not just about what you learn in the classroom, the learning and the experiences that you develop, the relationships you develop, and the fun that you have outside of the classroom is a really important part of your university journey. And our students get very involved in a number of different things, both within the faculty as well as outside the faculty and across campus. UBC has a number of different opportunities for students to get engaged, whether it's joining the snowboarding club or getting active in an organization on campus around advocacy, or whether you're joining student government, or you just want to go and enjoy hanging out with your friends in a sunny location somewhere on campus. There's lots of different ways to get involved, and these are some of the ways that our students are involved in things internal to the Faculty of Land and Food System. The Agora Cafe is an example of a student-run cafe that um, provides low-cost food to address some of the food security challenges that some of our students face here on campus. Um, and it's a student-run cafe with some really delicious snacks and food. I love when I can smell the wafts of the Acora baking from downstairs that come wafting up the stairwells in this building. It's very enticing and an incredible space for students to develop uh, skills around running a business, working in food service industry, preparing food, working on recipes, and testing them out with um, their community. And then supporting students to have access to low-cost food is also an incredibly powerful method. The Wednesday night dinners is a way to bring community together in the faculty, where vegetarian dinners are served every Wednesday night and students can come and gather together with their peers and enjoy a hot meal. And the LFS ACE, or the Academic Career and Engagement Team, as well as the LFS US, which is the Undergraduate Student Society, which is so similar to a student council in a high school, very involved in providing a lot of workshops and support for students in terms of their learning and progression through their education. And one of our students here today is very involved with the LFS Undergraduate Society. So I'm going to let Wing share a little bit about how she's gotten involved outside the classroom and what that experience has meant to her. Wing? Hi, everyone. My name is Wing, and I'm in my second year in the Food Nutrition and Health General major. 
So I'm happy to be here today to share a bit about the LFS student life and give a bit of an insight into my program. So I'll first start off with um, student engagement um, opportunities like LFS US. And I'll just give a little background on what the Undergraduate Society is about. So we are a student-led organization that we support and connect LFS students through various activities, ranging from career building to fun social events just to help students relax maybe before um, exams. So my role in the council is um, a social coordinator. So I help plan and facilitate events that will connect LFS US students no, sorry, LFS students <laughs> throughout this school year. And here are some photos just highlighting the events that I've been involved with. Here in the center, um, there's my friend Trish. Um, we were at an LFS Welcome Week event where we have a series of events to welcome first year students onto campus. And she's in her second year in the Applied Biology program. And here's uh, on the left, there's um, a picture of our event, Slip and Paint, where I planned it with our so our AVP here, Trisha, uh, who's standing right next to me. And there's our president in, in the green shirt, Alicia. And there's Melissa, our senior advisor. So um, Trisha is in her fourth year. Alicia is in her fourth year as well. And Melissa is in her fifth year. And then lastly, here's a photo from the LFS week where there's a first year student that came to our event. So you see that in like LFS US, you really get the opportunity to connect with LFS students across all year levels and across different programs as well. And it's really just a great place to develop skills and gain connections with other LFS students, which um, I kind of struggled with in my first year because it was mainly the foundational science courses. So most students I interacted with were science students. So if you're looking for a place to maybe meet some LFS students in first year, LFS US can be a great place to start. And if you're kind of concerned that you might not have enough experience to apply, um, don't worry about that because there are seats in the council that are reserved for first year students. And really the main criteria we're looking for is that you're enthusiastic to represent LFS. And if you're worried that um, you might not have enough time to commit to LFS US as a council member, or maybe the events that are being planned just doesn't fit in with your schedule, don't worry, you still will have a chance to engage with other LFS students through classes like the LFS um, core series class, um, LFS 250. So here's a photo um, from my visit to a dairy farm as part of our BC Dairy System unit. And through experiences like this, we really see the interdisciplinary approach that we emphasize in LFS and why that is important um, to um, tackling um, issues. For instance, like um, animal, animals being provided with adequate care is essential for them to being able to produce quality milk. And this is also another example of systems thinking as we have to see how the BC dairy system interacts with our food system. So overall, I've been really happy that all these opportunities have really given me the chance to see how my learning applies to various settings. And I'm really grateful that I've been provided with so much opportunities to gain valuable skills, whether it is through an extracurricular or in class. Thank you. Thank you so much, Wing, for sharing your experiences. And I think it's really important to note that every student's experience is going to look and feel a little bit different. And what Wing was really excited about may be different than what Yolanda pursued, which is different than what Maddie will look at and different than what Ocean will reflect back on as the most exciting parts of her undergrad experience. So that's where we really do encourage you to explore and ask questions. And we are certainly here to help you navigate all the different opportunities that are there and to help you make good and effective choices and connect you with the people and the types of experiences that you're excited about, as well as encouraging you to try something new and push yourself a little bit outside of your comfort zone in order to grow a little bit and have the opportunity to challenge yourself in a really safe and supportive environment. And part of that safe and supportive environment is through your academic decision making. So if all of this sounds like a bit of a good fit for you, you're a science student, you're interested in areas of nutrition, health, food security, food justice, 
environmental um, sustainability and good conservatorship of the land and use of water and resources and taking care of animals, people, plants, and planets. And this is probably a pretty good place for you to be. And if you're excited about collaboration across disciplines, you can do that through our programs. If you are currently in high school, we do have two different degree credentials that you could enter in directly from high school. All of our degrees are Bachelor of Science degrees, but they are slightly different than the traditional Bachelor of Science degree in that they are Bachelor of Science degrees in particular areas of focus. So a Bachelor of Science in Food, Nutrition and Health and a Bachelor of Science in Applied Biology are the two available options for students to apply to directly out of high school. They're also available for transfer students to apply to um, from other post-secondary institutions or other programs on campus. In your first year, you can enter in and take a general first year um, course load. And then it's really not until your second year that you are going to be expected to narrow your focus a little bit and pick what we refer to as a major, which is a subject area of concentration within your degree program that you are going to dedicate and focus more of your time to in your later years. The degree uh, majors that are in the white circles are those that you can just simply choose, declare, and move on and you can pursue those programs. Any of the programs that have a green circle are competitive, meaning that there's a separate application process for those programs, but that you could still pursue them and prepare for them through your first and second years of your course. We do have two degree programs that are what we refer to as second year entry programs, meaning that you spend your first year in either one of our two programs, Food, Nutrition and Health or Applied Biology, or you may also come in from another program like Science, forestry or arts or other disciplines into the Bachelor of Science in Global Resource Systems or the Bachelor of Science in Food and Resource Economics. And we're going to talk about all of those programs in a little bit. But to give you a sense of what you can anticipate as you go through your undergraduate program, as I mentioned, all students will take a foundational year in the sciences. As I mentioned, you these programs are science degrees, so you do need a foundation in math, chemistry, biology, you need to understand the concepts and the theories in order to be able to apply them in your later years. So your first year is a real strong foundational building year. The second year is where you are going to, as I mentioned, declare your major and start to layer in some more program specific courses that are going to start to tailor your focus towards your area of interest and start to expose you to some of the different introductory courses in your disciplines through courses like FNH, so Food, Nutrition and Health 200, or APBI, Applied Biology 200. And you're also going to start to dive into the LFS core series through 250, which is the course that Wing mentioned just recently. And then in third year and beyond is where your program becomes a little bit more customized and definitely more hyper-focused towards your area of discipline and focus. And this is where you will continue your core series courses and taking the course such as LFS 350 that Yolanda spoke about um, earlier. And this is also where you can start layering in some of those unique learning experiences that come with time. So going on exchange, both Maddie and Oceana on the call here today are going to be going on exchange uh, in their respective programs. So incredibly excited for them to be able to have an opportunity to travel to and learn in other parts of the world so they can bring that learning back into their university experience co-op, which is cooperative education, which is paid work experience that is integrated into your undergraduate academic experience, and other types of practicums, directed studies, which is uh, where students work directly with faculty members to develop a research project or develop a learning that is more dedicated to an area of focus or interest that's not reflected in our current course plan. So third and fourth year is where you really do get to push your learning and to build some of those customized experiences into your undergraduate uh, repertoire. So what are the Food, Nutrition and Health and Applied Biology programs? Let's do a little bit of a deeper dive into what those programs are so that you can start to assess whether or not these programs are a good fit for you. So the Bachelor of Science in Food, Nutrition and Health really does have a large scope in terms of where your focus could go. So it ranges in topics from food production and processing to marketing and food consumption as well as understanding how the body metabolizes food, what impact nutrition has on diet and community, what uh, policies look like in terms of health policy locally, globally, 
how policy impacts people's access to food, understanding of nutrition, and what kind of preventative approaches can we take to ensure a healthy, sustainable, long-term community, uh, uh, healthy communities around us. We want to make sure that students are learning the skills to be able to adapt and communicate uh, with different cultures, so building competencies in those spaces, as well as a fundamental understanding of science and how that science applies in the real world. And as we talked about before, a lot of focus on working with community partners to really understand the impact of um, policy decisions. And this is really reflective of science with social impact and having the opportunity to truly make those connections to your learning. There are a number of different majors within the Bachelor of Science in Food, Nutrition and Health. Wing mentioned she was in the general Food, Nutrition and Health major, which is the most flexible and popular of all of our majors. We also have um, focuses in areas of food and nutritional sciences that can really dive deeper into the science of food than um, the science of nutrition, as well as the dietetics uh, major, which is the only dietetics a way that students can become registered dietitians, which is a designated uh, credential um, and professional designation. Uh, so UBC has the only dietetics program in the province, and it is a competitive program that students can apply to as they're entering into their third year of study. But to talk a little bit about the Food, Nutrition and Health program and her experiences so far in the Nutritional Sciences major, I'm going to let Maddie share a little bit with you about her own journey in tech and age. Awesome. Thank you very much, Christine. So yes, as Christine mentioned, I am in the Nutritional Sciences major and I'm in my fourth year, which is crazy to think how quickly this has all gone by. But some of the core memories that I have from my time in FNH or nutritional sciences specifically, um, take me beyond the classroom. I spent the past three, four years of my degree learning the foundational knowledge I need to be able to develop programming and workshops. And I've taken those skills and my knowledge about nutrition and how that affects human health and as well as the social impacts of nutrition um, and take that beyond the classroom. And I've done this through a club called NutriKids. And NutriKids has been one of my favorite experiences that I've had at UBC so far, because it's given me the chance to not only take what I've learned uh, in the classroom, but also take it to other people, specifically young elementary students in the lower mainland here in Vancouver, and give them a chance to learn more about what it might mean to be healthy, what the different food groups are, what certain vitamins and minerals will help them grow into big, strong, healthy individuals. And to see that curiosity and to get to answer their questions and to walk through different activities with them has been a really inspiring experience. And at least in my case, was a really great reminder of why I'm studying nutritional sciences and why I chose land and food systems over a different program. And I'll be honest, I didn't I didn't start in the faculty of land and food systems. I did transfer from the faculty of science because I really felt that I was missing that social element, that holistic approach to understanding a system as a whole, not just a particular element of it. So I've really felt so lucky, lucky to be able to be in land and food systems and be in nutritional science and take, you know, the experiences I've had in the classroom out into the community and to be able to see that ripple effect of not only how this education has affected me and what I understand about health and well-being and nutrition and food, but also to see how that is slowly starting to creep out into other communities and help inspire individuals to be more proactive in their own health. And that's my ultimate goal with my degree. So I really feel like I'm in the right place to accomplish that. Yeah, thank you. I'll pass it back to you, Christine. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing, Maddie. And it is really exciting to see that growth and development over time as people do have an opportunity, all of you students, to pursue your passions and then uncover kind of what that specific direction might look like and how that um, passion can be applied in a really real and practical way. So it's exciting for us to observe students going through that journey as much as it is for you to go through the journey yourself. So the other Bachelor of Science degree that students can enter directly from high school or transfer into from post-secondary is the Bachelor of Science in Applied Biology. Uh, we do have the Dairy Education and Research Center in Agassiz, BC, where all these beautiful cow photos are being uh, taken from. I've had the privilege of visiting that uh, location where we have a research center there and some world-renowned research and looking at the care of dairy and cattle, a uh, dairy cattle and uh, dairy production that Wayne was referencing in her uh, chat earlier. 
a real opportunity to, again, apply that learning in really real ways and understanding how um, to treat animals and how to treat the land and how to make good use of it um, and to ensure that we are managing our soil, plants, animals, and food production in sustainable and ethical ways is really important. And certainly no matter where in the world you are, we are seeing the dramatic impact of climate change through floods and forest fires and other devastating climate activities, the urban growth and urban sprawl that is reducing our agricultural land. Uh, how are we going to grow food that's nutritious and sustainable and can food, feed a growing population when we are seeing all of these crises happening around the world and wars that are preventing food from being transported and shared around the world? How do communities self-sustain to be able to produce the food that they need in order to be sustainable and keep the population healthy and growing? And we need to do this through technology and innovation and creative ways to be able to approach this through a systems way of thinking. So how do we equip students in the Applied Biology program as we do in the Food, Nutrition, and Health program to have difficult conversations and to face some of these challenges um, in really important uh, conversations through adapting um, your own understanding of the world, your own assumptions of how things happen. Uh, being an LFS is not easy all the time. Our students have the opportunity to face really um, difficult questions, face their own biases and assumptions about how things are being done and why things are being done, to be able to share their own experiences and learn from one another. Uh, and that's something that we really value in our faculty. And two of the majors, uh, or the two majors, I'm sorry, that exist in the Applied Biology program are Applied Animal Biology, as well as the Sustainable Agriculture and Environment. So an opportunity to learn both aspects of that system so how do we look at the ground and the soil and the ways in which we grow and the technologies that we use and the decisions we make, as well as how do we make good use and take good care of the animals that we not only use for food and consumption, but the companion animals and other ways in which humans and wildlife and humans and animals interact. And to share a little bit about her own experience in the Applied Biology program is our student, Oceana, who's in the Applied Honors, I'm sorry, Applied Animal Biology major. So Ocean, I'll turn it over to you. Hi everyone, my name is Oceana, as was just indicated, and I'm really excited to tell you all about the Applied Animal Biology program. So I am in the honors version, which is a, kind of like a step up more competitive program that introduces you to research. And so within it, you get to do an undergraduate thesis within your fourth year and get mentored by a professor or a graduate student. And so uh, for this year, I actually got to be mentored by one of the professors from the Marine Mammal Research Unit. And so if you look in one of my top right heptagons, I have a picture of a stellar sea lion, which I actually got to take myself because the graduate student I've been working with, she is looking at the hearts of these animals. And so I got to go with her to the Vancouver Aquarium where she works. And we went into the back and I was able to meet the stellar sea lions as um, one of her requests was for me to draw these different animals that she can use them in her research papers and projects. And so it was a really cool experience, especially because um, that Vancouver Aquarium is blocked off to the public in those areas. And so it was a really unique experience that I don't think I could have done without this program, in all honesty. And then um, within my program, you can really focus on like animal welfare or animal ethics, um, like ecology, conservation of animals and animal physiology. And so I'm doing a kind of mix of a bunch of things, mainly, mainly I'd say animal physiology and some of the welfare aspects, because that's really what interests me along with like ecology and things. Really, I have so much flexibility with the program that I've been able to do so much and look at so many different classes that all relate to these sort of problems and information. And for example, um, even though I'm in applied animal biology, I've been able to interact with classes such as a microbiology one. And so in the bottom, we have a picture of a Petri dish that I actually got to inoculate myself, which was super cool and a hands-on experience. And on the left side is my dominant hand and the right side is my non-dominant hand. And so that shows the difference of bacteria that I actually have growing on my hands just because of one I use more than the other. 
which was a highly disturbing thing to do in school, especially when you have all your friends sitting beside you and they're like, oh, I borrow pens from you. How gross. <laughs> but it was really neat. And then in the center, you actually have a picture of me holding a snail. It was a live snail, as in one of my classes, you get to do both dissections and interact with live animals. So um, every single day uh, that we have a lab there, they'll bring in a new animal for you to take a look at. And then you can also do dissections. If, you, if you're squeamish, I wouldn't recommend it, but I really like looking at anatomy, especially um, one of the cooler parts about it is that one class we got to look at bones and we were able to look at human bones as well. And so that's a real human skull. And so within this program, I've just been exposed to so much. And I just want to highlight all these hands-on opportunities that I get that really have um, helped me with my learning. Thank you so much, Oceana, for sharing your experiences. It's really incredible to see all of the different ways in which your learning has taken place outside of the classroom, as well as the different ways that you have had an opportunity to apply your learning uh, inside the classroom as well. And I think that's a really nice mix that all of the students and the faculty have an opportunity to explore and, and learn throughout their undergraduate program. So the Food and Resource Economics and the Global Resource Systems programs that we referenced earlier are two additional Bachelor of Science degrees. They are what we refer to as second year entry programs. This means that students need to spend a year in another program first and then it can apply to these competitive programs for second year entry. Um, like the rest of our programs, they really do focus on solutions that are needed, um, but they are focusing on them in a slightly different way. So the Food and Resource Economics program focuses on, surprise, surprise, the economics of food. So global supply chains, transportation, logistics, how we consume food, and you'll see, I'm sure, on the news, a lot of conversations these days, regardless of what country it is you're joining us from. Uh, inflation and food prices are going up and why is that happening and how do we as a community respond? Uh, so food resource economics, if you're interested in that aspect of the food system, that could be a really interesting area of learning for you. And then the Global Resource Systems Program is unique as well in that it allows students to choose a region of the world that they are interested in as well as a resource that they're interested in and build a curriculum around that resource in that region and create global opportunities to travel to learn and apply their learning in these different spaces as well. So it's opportunity for you to start entry nutrition and health and or applied biology or one of the other programs in transfer in or also come from another place. So if you are interested in joining us in the Faculty of Land and Food Systems, particularly into our entry um, programs reference in high school, here are just the quick notes for the 2023 admission cycle. So for students who are wishing to join us in September 2023, um, as of right now, it is after December the 1st, so the early application deadline has passed, but applications are open and will close on Feb or sorry, January the 15th, 2023. Uh, this is just a quick overview of what's required. So there is some foundational high school courses that are needed at both the grade 11 and 12, le uh, grade 11 and 12 level in order to be eligible for the courses you need to register in first year. If you have questions about how to translate this curriculum, which is both on the BC High School curriculum, into your particular curriculum of choice, we strongly encourage you to visit you.ubc.ca, as that is the website for our recruitment um, colleagues, and all of the admission requirements are in the Apply to UBC section where you can learn a little bit more about how to translate the curriculum for your particular home country curriculum. If you are looking to transfer into our faculty through a post-secondary transfer program, we do assess you based on your most recently completed 24 to 30 transferable credits. And it is important for you to have all of the high school prerequisites completed as well, or to have taken the equivalent of our first year courses for your post-secondary institution. Again, you.ubc.ca is the place to go to double check the admission requirements and the specific pathways into UBC. Um, and we have our colleagues in recruitment and admissions who can help answer your questions if you have any curiosities about your eligibility for admission or pathways to the University of British Columbia. Applications for post-secondary transfer students are also due January 15th, 2020. So we hope that that was very helpful in giving you a taste of what the Faculty of Land and Food Systems is all about, sharing a little bit about the academic experiences as well as the experiences of our students uh, as shared through the stories of Maddie, Yolanda, Oceana, and Wing. So thank you for sharing your time and giving 
uh, or sharing your experiences with the audience joining us. And if you do have questions or wish to stay connected with us, we are available for you. Academic advisors and LFS student services can answer general questions about our programs or admissions. And if you do ask a question we're unable to answer, we will be sure to pass you on to one of our colleagues in the recruitment uh, teams. You can reach us at the email address on your screen. If you wish to connect with one of the students on the video today because you have questions about one of the experiences that they've had or want to better understand the student experience in LFS, you can also send an email to the ambassadors uh, and they will respond as well. If you email during the month of December, please note response times may be slightly delayed or postponed until the new year as all of these students are involved in final exams for the end of their term and are not as readily available to meet, but will be more readily available in term two when classes resume in January. To follow us on social media, our Twitter and Instagram handle is posted there as well. You can learn all about the events and opportunities and the research that are happening in our faculty and get to see some of the student experiences through the stories that are curated on that space, uh, special space. And then you can visit our website at any time to explore all of the, the different things that we offer, as well as the different outcomes, alumni stories, student profiles, and learn a little bit more about our different programs and the student experience. We hope that you've enjoyed this session and that you learned a little bit more about the faculty of Land and Food Systems. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful day, and we hope to see your applications into the